All right. Hello, everyone. We are back in Synology. However, this time, instead of being on my test server, we actually are on my full regular server as the test server is a virtual machine and Synology will not let you virtualize what has already been virtualized, unfortunately. So our first step here is we're actually going to go in and we're going to download virtual machine manager. I've already got it downloaded right here, but if you've not downloaded it already, go to package center and simply type in virtual machine. And down here. So after that downloads, you're gonna to have to set up a storage pool. You go and do this by going to storage, add, and create a new storage resource. For this tutorial, we're going to be using Ubuntu. So go to the link to the description and download it. So after downloading Ubuntu, we're gonna go through and upload it to the machine. We do this by going into image, add, and we're going to be adding this ISO file from our computer. And now it's actually going through and creating a new operating system file from that ISO file. Basically it makes it a file that's able to be installed. So once that uploads and creates, we're going to actually go through and add the virtual machine. As you can see here, it is currently creating the ISO file. This way, the Synology will actually be able to interface with it. So now that our image has been created within Synology, we can go into Virtual Machine and actually create it. So to do this, we're going to hit Virtual Machine. This lists out all the different virtual machines you have running, as well as the hosts. One of the biggest constraints on virtual machines is how much system memory you have, not storage, but RAM. I would recommend having at least four gigabytes to run any virtual machines, as most of them will require two gigabytes and you'll wanna leave two gigabytes for your Synology. However, you can do it with less if you're doing command line interfaces. It is also incredibly inexpensive to buy RAM off of eBay. So now that we're in virtual machine, we're going to create a new one. Here we're going to choose Linux because we've got a Linux distribution. I'm going to be stored on my main storage network. And here we name it. You can give it as many CPU cores as you would like. This basically specifies how much CPU resources the virtual machine can use at any given time. So over here, I'm going to set it to two. Now the memory. When selecting the CPU cores, you say I will give it up to two cores. However, when you're selecting RAM, you're giving it the full amount of RAM that you specify. So keep that in mind. And give it space. Here, we're going to go down to the drop down menu and select it. This additional ISO file is for other things that generally you're not going to use. And you can set all of these to defaults. This last one, virtual USB controller, you can actually specify one of the ports on your Synology to act as a virtual USB controller. As in, if you plug a USB into that port, it will register as if you plugged it into the virtual machine. And now it's gonna create it. Now, once it boots up, we can actually connect to it. Simply go down and select the machine and once it's running, you can cl just click connect and it's gonna open in this new window. So right now, we have just started up Ubuntu for the very first time. It is completely normal for the OS to have multiple errors while booting up for the first time. I'm not sure as to why this is, but it happens for me every single time, yet it works later on just fine. So now we've gotten into the Ubuntu installer. Since this is already a virtual machine, we're going to say install Ubuntu. This basically takes the entire drive we've allocated it and creates it an entire Ubuntu operating system drive. Select your keyboard layout. For this, we're going to do a minimal installation because otherwise it will take forever. 
Here, you can select how you would like to install your Ubuntu server. If you'd like to encrypt your disks, you can do this here. However, if you've already encrypted your drive, you're going to have some trouble because it's going to have to re-encrypt and de-encrypt everything twice, once for Synology and once for Ubuntu. So now, this is taking those virtual disks that we created, it is formatting them, and it is now setting up Ubuntu as a brand new OS. I live in Los Angeles, big city guy. And here, we just set it up like every other new computer. So now Ubuntu is going through and installing itself. It's going to take quite a while because there is a lot to unpack and it's a virtual machine. Virtual machines tend to take longer to install or do anything with regard to the hard drive as opposed to a normal setup. So yeah, that installation took such a long time that, it, well, I went on an adventure and came back. But now, here we go. We've successfully installed the server. So first we're just going to log in and see what we got. So overall, the installation took about 45 minutes, but that was mostly due to the fact that my Synology was going through the BTRFS checksum, which is basically going through all the data on the entire NAS and doing checksums on it, which is very read-write intensive, and it meant that a lot of the random read and writes were slowed down. Generally, when you're doing a OS installation, you've got a ton of random read writes as it's getting all the files in place that it needs to run. So that's why it took a lot longer than it probably should have. Normally, I'd expect to see about maybe 20 minutes, just a guesstimation. All right, so now we're in our Ubuntu server. You can do a lot of things in Ubuntu, and one of the neat ones is say you are currently external to your network, and you really need to be able to SSH back in. Well, you can remote into your NAS via the web interface, then go into the terminal here, and this terminal is going to be on your local network. As you can see here, well, it's all going to be blurred out. We've got my IP address of my local network here. That means wherever I am in the country via this web interface, I can actually go through it and connect back into my local networks. This is a great solution if you've got a Linux box that is messing up and you really need to SSH back in, but you're on vacation. So overall, now we've just got a clean installation of Ubuntu. This can allow you to one, learn more about how computers work. Generally using Linux distributions allows you to get in closer to the way a computer actually works and gain a better understanding. They're also just kind of fun to use. Then on the server side, if you have commands you want to run often, you can create different virtual machines and have them all doing different processes. I'm actually planning on creating a new video. It will show how to mount your Synology drives into the virtual machine. This way you can have something like drop a movie into it and automatically have your Synology NAS convert it to whatever file format you would like to do. Those are just some of the options you can do with a bunch of virtual machines running. Virtual machines are also great because they're great testing grounds. You can do whatever you want in them without worrying about breaking them. Because if you break them, using snapshot replication, you can just go back to it two weeks ago. Alright, thanks for joining me. I enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you like them too. Bye!